I've been doing a lot of experimenting lately on my gravity flyer and I just wanted to share some insights with you guys and what's going on. Now in the last test that I did there was a lot of clicking, a lot of popping sound. What was that? That was my piezo buzzer. So when you have this thing it's got the round disc and in the center you have the piezo part. Well I installed it upside down so basically the flat part went against the roof and the piezo part was down. Now, honest mistake, but I did it. So what was happening? It was actually growing in size, so it would pop, and it made a clicking sound. So every time that it had energy produced into it, it clicked. What was the amazing thing about it was, is that it worked with the actual vibration of the entire gravity flyer. So as it went, it was popping and clicking just at the same rate as the gravity flyer itself. I found that very interesting, guys. It kind of gets you in a mindset of what's going on. It's naturally clicking and popping with the same rhythm, with the same beat rate as the gravity flyer itself. So if you have your gravity flyer running super fast on the disc, it's gonna have a different vibration in the center plate than it would if you were running it slower. You know, I watched something that Alexi had said, and it stuck with me. And it was in a translated version that Charlie showed. And it was a simple number, 13 hertz. Why would that stick out to me? Well, it goes into exactly how fast these motors can run. They cannot run very fast. Max 1400 RPM on the top, max on the bottom is 600. He doesn't run them at the full speed. So what does that mean to us? Well, it means that he's lowering it down, but why 13 hertz? Well, it's about 720 RPM, somewhere in there in that range, on the top disc. Now, we know that the top disc goes into our Tesla coil, and it changes our Tesla coil. Mine was running a little faster. Maybe it was my mic not being able to go down further. And even when we check that, it could be somewhere around 17 to 18 hertz. 13 hertz is important because if that's true, then exactly where I set my gravity flyer yesterday in testing was exactly where it had to be. It was right on that mark, right at 720 RPM, 13 hertz. Now, I could be off by a few numbers there, but please understand this. It's a concept in understanding what he's thinking in his head versus what we're doing. And that has to come into play. I went back and looked at some of his previous experiments. And in each one, he's doing something different that you need to translate to your gravity flyer. Now, another thing that I did yesterday to bring up the actual amount of energy in each disc is I went ahead and took the whole thing. I have this running on a, a motor driver so that you can change the amount of energy going in. I cycled it. So I went down to absolute zero, back to the right where I had it before, back down to absolute zero, back down to what I had it for. What's going on there? It's changing the polarization of those discs. So it's like uh, an intense push on it, boom. And then pull it off and push it again and do it again. And anything you know in nature that you do this to, you can get it to move. You can get something to change. And that's exactly what he was doing. It wasn't that uh, you turn it up slowly. It's that you turn it off and then turn it back on. I would love to put a, be able to push a button and to be able to stop it and then hit it back to max right away. What it's doing is it's pushing, pushing, pushing just like this. So what happens is you get this thing that's pointed down in your, uh, whether it's positive or negative, I just look at it as arrows. So you get an arrow pushing down, what happens? You start moving things. So all now the, the arrows are pushing down. Now it's all getting in one direction. Instead of it being misaligned in all these different ways, now it's all in one direction. Polarizing the plates. This is very important in everything that I do. Now, do I need more amps versus volts? Well, it's kind of tricky on this, isn't it? Because you want a static volt because you want it to be able to get in the air. But we also know that he lessens it by how much energy he puts in. Again, another look back on what he did before. 
So what's the actual answer? We need a little more amps than I like to put into it because that's what's going to change the polarization of something. I need a few more amps in it for that magnetic signature to be a little bit stronger in order to pull it in. You say, well, magnetic signature, well, what's going on with the eddy current then? Isn't that the most interesting part of this? Here we are with eddy current in this craft on both discs. It's not just one, it's both. So why is it that he puts that in there? You know, you could say, well, he puts it in rotation just so that he can get the craft to actually level out. And, uh, you know, it's just a heavy weight that rotates. And that's actually true. That's one effect of it. What the effect that he's trying to do here is a polarization effect. He's trying to elicit a response through both this and the center plate through that eddy current. Why does that make a difference to us when we go to polarization, the high voltage field? Well, because it's going to change the directions of everything. So when we put this piezo in and you have it in the right direction, unlike what I did, what is it actually going to do? It's going to change it as it pushes down straight through it. We saw that when I put in a massive amount of voltage, we get a swirl and it goes around and then it goes up just like this on the bottom. That's very important when you look at something like this because the top itself is going to spray down like this. We know this. So he's creating what it looks like is an upside down tornado in this craft, but it just has to do with an energy flow. It's not necessarily that he's trying to create a tornado. It's trying to get the flow of energy right goes up, pulls, brings back down. And that's what we see. And when I tell you that my gravity flyer is dumping out energy in the bottom, well, that's what's going on. It goes in, it comes out, the flow inside of my Tesla coil field, inside of my frame right there, it's flowing in and it's pushing down. So there's a flow to this. Now, does it mean lift on there? Not necessarily. But what it does mean is that he's creating a polarization throughout the entire craft. That's important to this. This man always says that he's trying to bounce it off the earth. Well, that makes sense when you start the craft because it's sitting on the ground. And you say, well, you got a Tesla coil, it's a capacitor to ground. Yes, it is. But in order to get it off of the ground, you have to have two things that are completely negative. So what happens in this craft is very curious. It actually pulls negative throughout the entire craft at certain points. So do you get a little push off the earth? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to. When you polarize something and you make them the same, both negative, boom, you're going to get a little burst. And I think that's what he does. But the actual in-air interaction is different. I think that that actually changes because now he's got this thing that's all negative and then once in a while the top plate will pull a positive charge and that's the difference in how he gets it to jump there's a lot of interaction going on here guys changing something in this is not very fun to do let me just tell you that right now the man put it in for a certain reason it's up to us to discover what that reason is it's not up to us to change it Doing every one of these tests, I'd leave them out there raw for you guys because I want you to be able to determine it on your own. Now I'm coming back and telling you what my observation is and what I'm noticing. I notice a lot of different things in the fields as well. So you, you look at me and I put this uh, dryer sheet on here, right? And it's starting to click my computer. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? It's just a dryer sheet. Maybe, hey, maybe he's putting a lot of static volts in there. Maybe that's all it is. Well, no, it's not. And let me just tell you something on the field researcher you should know. The Tesla field when run to the center plate will put a very small bubble around this craft. It literally goes within one inch of the craft on the outside. That's it. And you can test that with the light all day long. And I show you in all the videos that it actually does just that. That's the amount that it does. So what's going on when I put the dryer sheet into it? Well, it's actually taking the charge that's on that plate and I'm pushing it to the outside of the field of the Tesla coil field. What is that doing? Now with the actual static volts on the outside of the field, 
the Tesla coil field pushes that static out. It makes it jump out further. That's why you get a lot of EMI, electromagnetic interference, coming out of this thing. It screws with your computer. So, how do I know that I found the field on the outside of this thing when it's in the correct configuration? Or, I should say, the high voltage on the top and bottom disk, Tesla coil field to the center plate, which goes to the whole frame. It's because I know exactly where the field is. Sometimes I do testing with it inside out. When you do something, just remember, equal and opposite reaction. That's what you get. So, when you turn the field inside out, you can just find that it pushes the field out, right? Pushes that electrostatic field out. But when you reverse it, what is it doing? It's holding that field in. How much is in there? Well, it's the same amount as if you reversed it, except for you can now see it when I put that little piece of dryer sheet on there. You can see I'm pulling it back to the outside and it's having the effect. So do I know the effect? 100%. I know exactly where my field is. I know exactly how to calibrate it. And I know exactly where to put it to find everything I want to find. So I know exactly how much pressure I'm putting into this thing. Exactly how much is in there. So, what do I need to do it now? I know that I have the static voltage. I now need a polarizing voltage. So now I have to adjust it back out. Lately, I've been running two flybacks in order to elicit the response of the actual static volt. Now, I need to get it back to a magnetic volt. So, what that means is more amps. Now, I know some of those terms may not make a lot of sense, but if you look at the science of what they're doing, they make perfect sense. You're putting a pulse okay, signal right into a core, and the core itself goes into a uh, coil, and the coil pulses with the pulse that you put into the core. You can do it with anything that you want to to pulse that thing. You can take a tuning fork and turn that thing on and it'll actually do it because all it needs is the pulse. The pulse creates the energy that goes into it. The amount of volts and amps that you put into it increases that amount of energy. That's how that coil works. So what is it doing? It creates a magnetic flow that goes back and forth based on the pulse inside the coil. That's all it's doing. So then you're now transferring voltage to that. So you're taking a magnetic, okay, a magnetic volt right here and pushing it onto whatever you put it onto. That's all that flyback does. That, that's what you're looking at. So when I tell you what it's doing, I'm telling you and describing exactly the interaction that's going on. That's why I break it down in two ways. Static for more volts and then a magnetic signature for more amps. So that's the breakdown in my head that I use. So what do we need to do? We need to add some more amps to this equation. I need that polarization to be on the disk a little more. Does it mean heavy voltage? No, it doesn't. We're talking a spark like this, okay? Maybe five millimeters. That's all Alexi used. It may go up just a little bit, maybe down just a little bit, but that's where he was. I showed the video of it, of what exactly he has. That's why I went back and looked at everything. What experiments was he doing? One of the things that he was doing as well was a polarization. You got this thing in there, it was like this, okay? And he's got foil over it, and he says he's making a capacitor into it, and then above it you have a piece of PVC. A PVC does not get electrically charged, it gets polarized. It puts a charge on it. But it's not something that you can go over, take your positive and negative and connect it to and make the charge happen. And you'll just burn the actual PVC pipe. What is he doing? He's making a charge in it, okay, and polarizing this thing, which basically means it has a north, south, uh, like a negative and a positive to it now. Okay, that's all he's doing. Now he's putting a charge on it based on the charge that he's putting on the bottom piece here, on that bottom capacitor. But he can't do it in one shot. The earth doesn't work that way. When you put things in everything at full power right away, 
they don't work you have to pulse them initially to align everything so what happens so you have this piece right here and you have this piece down here and he taps on it and holds it waits and then he does it again then he waits and then all of a sudden you see the PVC pipe dipping just like this and it stays there until he lets off and then it goes back to the way it was this is polarization of something that's non-magnetic this is the understanding when I always say it's polarized versus magnetism magnetism is only to ferromagnetic metals okay that's it this guy isn't using that he's using aluminum that's not one of those metals that magnet goes to so how do you get the center plate to have a magnetic signature the only way to do it is polarization you must polarize it in order to change it so basically you must take the fields and make them want to be together that's it so when we take that and we put that into our disc there going into our center plate what are we realizing he's doing he's actually polarizing it that's where we have to go with it that's the next step we got our piezo popping we know what it's doing we're putting out a beat frequency in it that matches the upper disc rotational speed guys we're getting there I just got to turn it back the right way obviously that would definitely help but it was kind of like one of those accidents that you just love to see happen in a lab it told you so much and it only happened when you're in the correct octave of the harmonics you saw me tap the plate guys every time I tapped it I have to reset and when it reset it was in a different harmonic that's important to this whole craft it all has to align I know it sounds like hey he's just tapping the plate oh my god you know why are you making such a big deal about that well harmonics is something that's a little bit different than just playing with voltage here guys it, it, it it's a sound it's a frequency it's all those things rolled into one but what it is is it's matching something in this earth he is for lack of a better term created a magnetosphere in this thing and he's tapping into the ether of the earth in order to make this thing lift that's important because the harmonics is important guys if this was something that you know just a frequency we can put out there then every time we turn on a radio we can create earthquakes now, now, uh, how crazy is that it, it, it's an important thing to understand not everything is what you think it is and, and you got to get that through your head it's 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 one of those things that it took me a while to understand we're not dealing with something that's in a regular everyday life we're building anti-gravity here we're not plugging in a new blender we're building anti-gravity which means everything that you thought was right may not be right so when I tell you it's changing the octave in it please understand it is doing it how do I know it's doing it? I'm eliciting a response every time that I turn around and make an adjustment I'm eliciting a response from this crowd I show it to you in a fashion that most people won't because they do it on did a little bit of different testing they see an oscilloscope and they can see numbers I love the numbers okay I love it it, it confirms everything that I'm doing but if you do not get that actual response you're in a lot of trouble because then you won't understand how to adjust it you can see it and some people are good at that I'm not I like things visual and I like things where I can you know hear it feel it see it you know those kind of things and I can get this thing just fine-tuned fine-tune this thing right to where I want it to be and then I can take each interaction and then put them into their place guys I'm putting like a like a jigsaw puzzle together here every little part has its place every amount of energy has its max and minimum and everything must now intertwine if it doesn't you fail that's what's so crazy about this project it only works one way and that's the whole key you only get one right answer at the end you don't get a hundred of them you get one that means your combination of every little part you put into this has to be correct it cannot be off 
So when you see me doing all these tests, guys, I'm looking for every little bit of this thing, this puzzle that I'm putting together. Thankfully, I understand the fields. I understand polarization. I understand the electrostatic effect that's going on here. The EMI. Do I know I'm creating a bubble? You better believe I do. I know exactly what kind of thing we're doing. We're making a bubble here. We're, create, we're filling it with static electricity on the side. So we're basically energizing the air itself. Then we're polarizing a craft. That's what we're doing here. Everything dumps out the bottom. So this is such a big understanding in this process, guys. I'm leaving this update so that you guys can understand exactly how far we are into this thing. We are getting into the final laps here, guys. There's not much more to do to this craft. We've understood all the parts. We're now putting it together. I'm working on the piezo buzzer right now. That's about the last thing that goes into this before that combination lock has to be tweaked in oh so slight a ways, guys. This is the point where everything starts to slow down and you start to see each part little by little by little get fine tuned into this thing. If you saw my experiment yesterday, let me just tell you, there's so much going on there that if you just look at it and say, oh, he's just making some noise and there's nothing there, then you miss the entire thing. You missed it all. You, you didn't understand any of it. I'm showing you the actual physics that are going on in the craft in a way that you can start to see it. Guys, I hope you took a lot out of that experiment yesterday. And I hope you took a lot out of the last couple ones I did on the field. Guys, I could sit down and write a book about this stuff and, and just write physics books all day long on the new physics created here. But that's not what I said I was going to do in this. I said I'm going to make this thing lift. It's exactly what I'm going to do. But in order to do that, I have to show you every little part of it. The last thing I want to do is get to this thing and just do it. And then you go, well, how did you do it? Well, that's not what I want. I'm going to show you how I did it. And then when I'm done doing it and it lifts, I'm going to walk away. I'll be done with this project. And that's it. I might write a book later on it, but that's it, guys. I don't plan to make this any bigger or anything else. I'm going to get it to that point and then walk away. That's what I do. Okay, I reverse engineer something. When I'm happy that I got it reverse engineered, I'm done. And then that's it. And then you'll have a historical record of exactly how I got there. That's what I plan to do. I'm just going to walk away once it lifts. Because at that point, I'm done. And I'll work on a new project and reverse engineer it and be happy in life. So guys, just a big update. Please watch the testing. It shows you a lot. And you know what? I just hope you guys understand what I'm trying to do here. And no matter which anti-gravity project you pick up, no matter which one it is, every one of these lessons is going to become very important in making it lift. Very important on how to build circuits to make it lift. Very important on the interaction. Very important on staying to what somebody did and actually reverse engineering it from what they did, not from your thought process. Now you can use various things to get there and manipulate something in order to get the response out of it, but you have to go back to the original creator design every single time and validate what you did. That's what's important in reverse engineering. That's what I like to do. I like to stay with things forever, just until they're done. Anyway, if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things, guys, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.